case you haven't heard, over the weekend, a presbytery has submitted an overture to our General Assembly this summer. This overture is to make Oprah Winfrey the fourth member of the Holy Trinity, thereby broadening its appeal and making it less gender biased. <laughs> Along with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the popular talk show host will be recognized as one person in the sacred and indiv indivisible unity of the Godhead, or Quadhead, as the updated Trinity will now be called. So we're in for a name change. We will no longer be Trinity Presbyterian, but will now be the Quad Head Presbyterian Church. Okay, if you haven't guessed already, that's a cheesy April Fool's joke for you. <clears throat> I thought about maybe doing one about Kansas actually getting disqualified and Ohio State going to the final. I've learned better. I thought, I thought about saying that I was actually the Kansas Mega Millions winner. <laughs> I'm not. I'm full of jokes today. For you see, today, April Fool's Day, Palm Sunday, is all about being foolish. Now, being intentionally foolish does not mean spewing nonsense, like Kansas getting disqualified. Intentionally being ignorant or not taking things seriously. We're talking about the kind of foolishness that those in power need to hear. The kind of foolishness that at first may not make sense, but later becomes clear. As Psalm 118 puts it this morning, it's the stone that the builders rejected becoming the chief cornerstone. Jesus taught a lot in his ministry using foolishness with some very foolish characters and some very foolish stories. Stories where the last is first and the first is last. Where all the workers get paid the same no matter how many hours they put in. Stories where the shepherd left behind 99 perfectly good sheep to go search for one missing lamb. He used foolishness to point out the hypocrisy of the religious leaders. He used foolishness to show the amazing grace of God, that God is like a father who runs to greet the prodigal son. He took stories that people thought they knew. He took characters people thought they could predict. And Jesus turned those stories and characters upside down to reveal the workings of the kingdom of God. But the disciples and those around Jesus often missed the point of his foolishness. Let's take setting the scene in today's gospel passage. The reason they were all gathered in Jerusalem, these crowds of people, what we hear in scripture called the festival, was the Passover feast. The time of year when all Jewish people, including Jesus, celebrated their salvation in Egypt at the temple in Jerusalem. The story in Exodus goes that the Hebrew people were instructed to kill an unblemished lamb and put the blood of that lamb over their doors. The blood on their doors caused the spirit or angel of death to pass over their homes. They were saved from death by the blood of a sacrificial lamb. Those hearing John's gospel would not have missed that connection. The timing of the arrival of the Passover lamb and Jesus the true lamb arriving in Jerusalem at the same time. But apparently those living the scripture passage failed to see the connections. John the Baptist even earlier called Jesus the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But you know those disciples, they're missing it. The disciples think, oh Jesus, you're so foolish. You're a man, not a lamb. As the Messiah, you will be triumphant in battle over the Romans, not sacrificed on a cross. Do you see the foolishness of it all? The disciples miss the point time and time again. And little did they know how much they needed this lamb Messiah and his foolishness. Foolishness abounds in today's scripture passage. 
Take the crowd, for instance, daring to call Jesus king of Israel while there was a different king in power. That is the core of treason. Did they not know their cries of acclamation would provide evidence to the charges of treason against Jesus? And Jesus doesn't try to correct them. He actually says nothing. He doesn't say, hold on a minute, you know I'm not that kind of king you're talking about. I mean, he had been teaching that for several years at this point, predicting his death, his downfall, his passion. He had been telling the disciples over and over again that the kingdom of God did not look like the kingdom of this world. That what the people wanted in a king was not what Jesus, king of Israel and the world, had to offer. He chose to carry no weapons, just to ride in on an animal of peace. He didn't raise any armies or plan out clever battle strategies. Instead, he offered living water and salvation to all who believed in him. Do you see the foolishness of it all? The people so desperately wanted him to be their king that they couldn't see the lamb hiding in their king's parade, the sheep in king's clothes. Little did they know that the one they called king was really the jester. The king they wanted to lead them was really the sacrificial lamb. The headline of today's reading from John could almost sound like a headline from The Onion, a satirical newspaper. Peaceful Carpenter's son receives national hero's welcome home. The palm branches that we're all waving today were a sign of national identity and victory, like waving the American flag for war heroes when they come home from battle. And yet... What battles had Jesus fought and won? What great patriotic act had he done to receive such a welcoming parade? Do you see the foolishness of it all? The people thought they were waving branches of victory since Jesus was the warrior Messiah they had decided would overthrow their Roman oppressors. Little did they know that foolish Jesus instead was fighting a much bigger battle against sin and death. And the Pharisees, lurking at the end of our scripture today, throwing their hands in the air, not with joy and palm branches, but with frustration that their plots have been foiled again. They had put out word in the previous chapter of John to let them know any news about the movement of Jesus. But nobody's telling them they're going to the parade. And in fact, the Pharisees had been planning on killing Lazarus since his resurrection was causing so much belief in Jesus. The Pharisees see the crowd running after Jesus, stampeding after him, and assume that the crowd know the truth about this particular king of Israel. That this crowd was really deeply in love, that it wasn't just a fleeting infatuation. Jesus, up to this point, had been in hiding, knowing that they were out to get him. But foolish Jesus chooses to ride that young donkey into the thick of his enemies, to ride in at Passover time when large crowds gathered and he was sure to attract attention. Do you see the foolishness of it all? If Jesus had stayed in comfortable hiding for forever, he couldn't have completed his journey to the cross. Little did the Pharisees know that their plots would come to fruition later this week, but their plots could not stop the Savior of the world. Do you see the need for foolishness in the gospel and our world today? I think of two great jesters in 2012, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert, with their fake news shows that many times offer a more honest and critical look at what is going on in our world than all our serious news channels. 
There's deep truth to be found beyond their humor and entertainment. Even in that simple April Fool's Day joke about Oprah joining the Trinity, it is more than just a joke. It is a commentary on our society's tendency to deify celebrities, to worship their latest endorsement or television show instead of the Messiah King. It reveals our desire for easily packaged black and white lives rather than living in the complexity of a king who is a lamb, a savior who chose to die. Being foolish invites a new perspective on the old reality. Being foolish is like saying, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. Being foolish is like riding triumphantly into a crowded city on a young donkey instead of a war horse. Being foolish is like being called the king of Israel while King Herod is still in power. Being foolish is like being hailed as a conquering national hero when he has yet to fight the ultimate battle. Being foolish is like riding into Jerusalem in the midst of your enemies who are plotting your death. Being foolish is like redefining what being a king means by acting as a sacrificial lamb. When we claim Jesus as our king, we also claim Jesus as our lamb. For much like when we celebrate communion, we are celebrating Palm Sunday today not just as a memorial of a past event, but as a very present reality. We are still crying our hosannas, God save us. We are still crying out for salvation in politics, in the economy, in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces. And yet, when it comes to partnering with Jesus to make a change, to speak truth to power, we find ourselves not wanting to look foolish, worried about what others might think of us if we take a stand. We pretend that we have won the battles against racism and sexism, not wanting to look foolish by claiming that those antiquated evils still exist in our postmodern society. We praise Jesus as King on Sunday morning, but we keep our mouths shut during the week so we don't look foolish to our friends, our schoolmates, our colleagues. We are the fickle Palm Sunday crowd, crying out, King of Israel, and not realizing what that will mean for Jesus or for us. As Christians, we are joined to Jesus in playing the jester, in fooling our friends and neighbors. Wave your palm branches with pride. Take lunch off from work on Friday to come to church. Give your money to fulfill your pledge to Trinity rather than buying more lottery tickets. Be foolish by trusting in a Savior who found power in weakness. Be foolish by giving up your life so that you may find it. Be foolish by giving of yourselves that others may live. Be foolish by joining a committee or a small group and finding your place at Trinity. Be foolish by continuing to be in covenant with a foolish God who keeps bringing us back after we break our promises. Be foolish and know that Jesus is your king and your lamb. Know that through the death of Jesus, we are all foolishly, amazingly granted eternal life. And that is no joke. Amen. Amen. Amen.